Is there no justice in the universe, no decency? Absolutely oh. none, dear. I remember remarking that to Nanny just the other day when the stopper came out of my nail varnish and made the inside of my handbag look like borscht. There was no reason in what happened. It had nothing to do with the law of logic or the law of compensation or the law of anything. It was just low, senseless, bad luck. Never mind, darling. Mine? That's your mind to the end of my days. Oh, business is that's for my brain and blood. I went up to the table, seven. My lucky number was miraculously vacant. I sat down and waited for the shoe to come round. Just as it was two away from me, Pearl Brandt, that New Jersey hag, tapped me on the shoulder. It's terrible, she said. I can't find a place anywhere. Will you be a dear and let me use yours just for a little? I'm feeling so lucky tonight. She was right. Right. She ran the bank 17 times, collected 170,000 francs with all the delicacy of a starving jaguar let loose in a butcher shop, and then graciously gave me back my place. Whereupon well, you proceeded to lose our 2,000 francs in the brief space of four minutes, borrow 500 from Bertie Gifford, who will never let us forget it, lose that too, and join me in the bar wearing what might be moderately described as a set look. Correct. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Not for the moment. Good. Then we might talk of something else. I can't see the necessity to talk at all. That is only because you are temporarily exhausted by your own verbosity. Your natural flow will return in a minute. I was fond of Aunt Agnes, and she was fond of me. That rather cloying relationship belongs mercifully to the days before I knew you. She left me that bracelet in her will. It seems odd to me she should symbolize her great love for you by such an undistinguished little trinket. Aunt Agnes was the most generous woman in the whole goddamned world. I suspect your memory of her has been softened by time. To the impartial observer, she appears to have been a stingy old bitch. <gasps> Tell me. If it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to leave Aunt Agnes where she rightly belongs, warbling through eternity with a feathered choir. Seems a pity you can't turn your devastating wit to a more commercial advantage. You should write a gossip column. I haven't got a title. Oh, shut up! That was merely rude. It's no use going on like this. Snapping at each other. We must face Facts. Oh, God. But, Charlie, don't you see? Your passion for facts is rapidly becoming pathological. You'll go mad, that's what you'll do, and spend your declining years being led around some awful institute by a keeper, facing the fact that you are the Empress Josephine. <laughs> don't be so idiotic. I'm sick of facts. In the future, I shall cut every fact I meet stone dead. I intend to relax. To live in a lovely dream world of my own where everything is hilariously untrue. After all, at least three quarters of the civilized world do it. Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't you what? Delude myself. I'm going to start deluding myself this very minute. I'm going to start with the Old Testament and believe every word of it. I'm going to believe in Jehovah and Buddha and Mohammed and Luther and Amy Simple McPherson. I'm even going to believe in Aunt Agnes. Will you 